how to make this delicious frozen Oreo loaf dessert. Hello everyone. First thing we're going to do is make the base of this dessert or the crust. For this you'll need 20 Oreo cookies that you'll need to process into fine crumbs. You need to end up with about two cups of crushed cookies at the end and that's about 20 cookies. I use my little handy chopper to process them into fine crumbs but you can just put them in a Ziploc bag and just bang them with the bottom of a saucepan or with a rolling pin until they're nicely crushed. Then you're going to take three tablespoons of butter, melt it and then pour it into the crumbs and then just give it a stir until all the crumbs are moistened with the butter. Then take those moistened crumbs and put them into a loaf pan that's been lined with aluminum foil. Press it into the bottom and about an inch and a half up the sides. Now I'm going to save you some trouble here. When you make this, make sure your piece of tin foil is a lot bigger than your pan. You can see on the ends of the loaf pan, the foil doesn't go all the way up to the top. And that gave me some trouble when I tried to take this dessert out of the loaf pan later. So make sure that your aluminum foil is super big, covers the entire loaf pan with lots of overhang on the edges on all four sides. It'll just be a lot easier to get it out of the pan to slice it up later. Then you're going to take two cups of whipping cream and you're going to whip it up with an electric mixer or by hand until it's nice and thick and you get stiff peaks. And then in a larger bowl, place eight ounces of cream cheese that's been brought to room temperature and add to that a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then you're going to blend the cream cheese and the vanilla together until the cream cheese is nice and smooth and light and fluffy. This one, as you can probably tell, wasn't quite room temperature. It was still a little bit cold, so I had some escaped pieces that I had to put back in the bowl but it did eventually smooth out and become nice and fluffy. Then add in one can or 14 ounces of a sweetened condensed milk. Then you'll beat this for three or four minutes until it's nice and smooth and you can no longer see any more small pieces of cream cheese in the mixture. Now in a little tiny bowl, place a tablespoon of hot water and two tablespoons of instant coffee granules and just stir it around until the coffee is dissolved into the water and set that aside. Now fold in the whipped cream into the condensed milk cream cheese mixture. Just fold it gently but thoroughly until it's completely combined. Then after it's blended you're going to take half of that and put it in another bowl and I just reused the whipped cream bowl because you know why create more dishes if you don't have to. Now to one of the bowls, you're going to place one half cup of chocolate syrup. And I just use the store-bought chocolate sundae syrup that they sell at the grocery store. And then add in the coffee and water mixture. And then you're gently going to fold that in until it is combined. Now we're going to put it in the loaf pan. So we're going to take about half of that chocolate mixture. You're going to put it in the bottom of the pan, spreading it out evenly. And then scoop some of the white mixture on top of the chocolate mixture, about half of it. And then you're going to repeat the layers, another layer of chocolate and then another layer of the white mixture. And keep in mind that when you're done, this is going to be very, very full. Now I actually had a little bit left in each bowl when I was done filling it. I did use the nine by five inch loaf pan that they did request in the recipe, but it could be that the one they used when they tested it was just a bit bigger. And then the recipe says to take a butter knife and to swirl the layers gently together. I kind of swirled the top a bit. I didn't really go all the way to the bottom of it because I did really want those distinctive chocolate and white layers in my dessert. But if you want a swirled appearance, then you can maybe take a little bit more time and swirl it some more. And then I decorated the top with a few chopped up Oreo cookies. And then you're going to put this in the freezer and allow it to sit there for six to eight hours. I left mine in the freezer overnight until it's very, very firm. And here it is out of the pan. I had to pry it a little bit with a butter knife to get it started because some of the dessert was actually in contact with the glass of the loaf pan because my aluminum foil wasn't long enough. Um, once you get it out of the pan, then just take a sharp knife, dip the knife in some hot water, dry it off, and then 
slice yourself some delicious slices. And here's what it looks like on the inside. As you can see, all that swirling I did didn't do very much to the inside at all. So if you do want a marbled swirled appearance inside, you'd really have to give it a good stir. But I like this. I like the chocolate white, chocolate white contrast in this. This dessert is absolutely delicious. It's creamy and you have that cream cheese flavor throughout the whole thing with the crunch of the cookie on the bottom of the crust simply exquisite it's really really good and this would rival any kind of dessert that you could buy in the frozen food section of your grocery store and i think if you're making this as a dessert uh, for a dinner party i think people will be very impressed now for those of you that are wondering the addition of the coffee is optional you can't taste the coffee very much in the dessert it does give it a very very subtle mocha flavor when you're eating it i just loved it thanks for watching I love Oreo cookies and I love that they can be made in all sorts of great desserts. So I have a playlist of all of my Oreo cookie based recipes. If you want to see it, go ahead and click right on your screen or look for the link in the description box below. Bye bye.